Welcome back. In this video, we are going to simplify radical expressions. Let's go back a little bit and let's factor 48. Uh, we would do a factoring tree. We might say factors of 48 are 8 times 6. And then we might continue to factor that and say, well, 8, we know that is 2 cubed. And 6 is 2 times 3. And, well, 2 cubed times 2 to the first, that would be 2 to the fourth times 3. So we could factor 48 that way, 2 to the fourth times 3 to the first power. Well, we can do the same thing with square roots. We can also do a factoring tree. We could look at 48, and I'm going to use different factors here, ones that are a little easier to work with. That would be like the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, right? 16 times 3 is 48. And that's what we have down here. 2 to the 4th is 16 times 3. So there's a couple ways to write that. We can write square root of 48 as the square root of 16 times 3. We could also split it into a factoring tree like that. The square root of 16 times the square root of 3, which the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. So factoring the square root of 48, we get 4 times the square root of 3. Now, now that's not the same as 48. 48 and radical 48 are, are different numbers. There are different locations on the number line. Um, but I wanted you to see how we can take a square root and split it into two, a product of two different square roots, just like we can take any kind of number uh, that's not prime, and factor that into two different or multiple different factors. And what I have applied here is the product rule for radicals. If we have any root of some number a times b, like my 16 times 3 above, that equals the root of 16 times the root of 3. So I was using square roots before, but if it was cube roots or fifth roots or whatever, we, it would be the same kind of thing. Well, and the same process works for division. The quotient rule for radicals, and we've been using this already, the nth root of a over b is the equivalent of the nth root of a all divided by the nth root of b. That's something we've been using since the beginning of our work with radicals. Give you a minute to write some notes here, but we know that a radical is simplified when the radicand has no factor raised to a power greater than or equal to the index. Okay? So in a fractional world, you wouldn't have a fractional exponent that's more than one. So the radicand has no factor raised to a power greater than or equal to the index. The radicand has no fractions in it, and the radic there are no radicals in the denominator. And finally, exponents in the radicand and the index of the radical have no common factor. Some of this is intuitive, you'll see it. Some of it you'll notice as we go through and I simplify, you will see when things are, are finally simplified and we can't simplify them any further. So let's begin with the square root of 32. Now when we simplify square roots, we're going to look for the highest perfect squares. Just like in a cube root, we're going to look for the highest perfect cubes. Because we're going to build that factoring tree like I did earlier in the video. So the square root of 32, I would split that. Yes, we could do 8 times 4, but the highest perfect square factor of 32 is 16. So that would factor to the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, or the square root of 16 times 2. But doing our factoring tree, well, the square root of 16 is 4. Radical 2 is simplified, so our final answer is 4 radical 2. The cube root of 54, well, now we're going to ask ourselves, what's the highest perfect cube factor of 54? And that is the cube root of 27 times 2, which, of course, is the cube root of 27 
times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So our final answer is 3 cube root of 3. That's a lot of 3's. This next one has some variables in it. Now we're taking the square root, so we could look at this as the square root of 72 times the square root of x times the square root of y cubed. So we're taking the square root of y cubed. Well, there's a perfect square factor in y cubed, that's, and it's y squared. There's definitely a perfect square factor of 72. 72 is 36 times 2. So the square root of 36 times the square root of 2 times the square root of x times the square root of y squared times the square root of y because y cubed can be split into y squared times y. So the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of y squared is y. Um, and I have left here the square root of 2, the square root of x, and the square root of y. So I end up with the square root of 2xy. And my y here should be in the absolute value bars. Our next sample problem, we want to find the cube root. So the cube root of negative 27, well, we take the cube root of a negative number, and then the cube root of x to the fifth, and cube root of y to the seventh, and cube root of z to the sixth. We're really looking for all of those separate cube roots. Cube root of negative 27 times the cube root of and I'm going to break x to the fifth down right away into x cubed times x squared. And I'm going to break down y to the seventh into the cube root of y to the sixth, because six is divisible by three, times the cube root of y times the cube root of z to the sixth. So the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of y to the sixth is y squared. And the cube root of z to the sixth is z squared. And so I have taken the cube root of that one that one, that factor, and that factor. So now all I have left is the cube root of x squared. Well, that's a less than my index. And cube root of y to the first, that's less than my index. Now, the reason I broke down y to the seventh into y to the sixth and y to the first, that might be one of your questions, why couldn't have I used y to the fourth and y to the third? Well, I could have. But I always want my highest perfect, in this case, cube factor. And the highest perfect cube factor of y to the 7th is y to the 6th, and not y to the 3rd. So this is the way to go. OK, let's take a look at our next sample problem. The opposite of the fourth root of 32, a to the 5th, b to the 7th. So we're going to look for factors that of 32 and a to the fifth that are perfect fourths, if you will. So we can break this down to, well, the fourth root of 32, we can break that down into the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 2. And a to the fifth, using what we know about variables, would be, we'd break that down the fourth root of a to the fourth times the fourth root of a to the first, because a to the fourth and a to the first is a to the fifth, and the fourth root of b to the seventh, well, 
the highest perfect fourth would be b to the fourth and then the fourth root of b cubed. So our perfect fourths, if you will, are 16 and a to the fourth and b to the fourth. So the fourth root of 16 is 2, so we'll use negative 2, and that'll take care of that one. And the fourth root of a is a, and the fourth root of b to the fourth is b, and that's all times the fourth root of 2, the fourth root of a, and the fourth root of b cubed. So our final answer here, negative 2ab times the fourth root of 2ab cubed. And a little more simplifying here, the twelfth root of 2 to the third power. Well, I'm going to look at this as, don't I, can't I do power over root? So that would be the equivalent of 2 to the 3, 3 twelfths power over root, which is 2 to the 1 fourth, or the fourth root of 2. It's my final answer. So I converted this one to a fractional exponent, made it easier for me to work with. And I am going to leave this sample problem, the sixth root of t to the second, I'll leave that one for you to bring to class. And that wraps up our sample problems of applying the product and the quotient rule for radicals, uh, summarizing when a radical is simplified. And we will see you in class.